What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Dealer Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today, see what we find. So we're gonna kinda run and gun today and we're gonna go look at that Mercury over there. Nobody wants those old Mercury Grand Marquis anymore, but I do. I love the Panther platform. It's sitting down in the back so it's probably blown its air ride, but I'm not too worried about that either. Not a big deal. Let's take a look. Well, never mind. I was actually wanting to look at this uh, F-150. It's an older one. It is, uh, what do they call these? The Super Cab, right? The Super Crew has four full doors and the Super Cab has kind of that half door over there. Uh, looks like we got a bunch of junk coming up over there. There's a GMC Yukon Denali. Not interested. I'm over the whole Denali thing. I am looking at getting another Tesla though. Uh, that's something I didn't tell you guys. I've got a Model 3 long range dual motor. Teslas have dropped like a rock in price, guys. Um, if you didn't know, <laughs> you should probably go check it out. If you ever wanted to buy a Tesla, now's the time. Now's the time. I can find them wholesale with relatively low miles in excellent condition with like full self-driving for $26,000. And that was a 2019. Yeah, a 2019 on my watch list right now. It's about to sell. And you're looking at like $26,000 with full self-driving and all of that good stuff, man. Uh, it's a good time to buy a Tesla for whatever reason. The prices have really dropped. Here's an 03 Grand Marquis. The vinyl top is in bad shape. The body's decent. The back end is sitting on the ground. This is a ultimate edition. What does that mean? It means it's got gold badges, the paint is gold, and it's got a gold vinyl roof. And it's got a badge that says ultimate. And that's that's it. <laughs> that's what you get for the ultimate edition. Otherwise, it's the exact same car you'd buy, you know, anywhere else. Let's take a look at it. It's got power. It's got the good old digital gauges. Oh, power steering is a little, power steering is a little rough. Let's turn on the air conditioning. Check engine light is on, air suspension light is on. That's okay though. Let's pop the trunk and let's just have a look. Somebody might have turned off the air suspension to tow it. That happens sometimes. And you just gotta, nope. Yeah, she's on, and wait, wait, wait. I think I feel the compressor working. Hold on. I swear I felt the vibration from the air compressor. Let's give it a minute. Let's give it a minute. It, it might come back. It might come back. Don't let this car fool you. Air conditioning does not work. Uh... Boy, it, it, it's 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 rough man again it's one of those cars that nobody really wants anymore yeah especially with the air suspension issues nobody's wanting to mess with that you know and the air conditioning don't work and it's got clear coat peel and it's got a corner light knocked out you know ugh. and the hood doesn't open god lord come on i can't even uh hardly get in here Oh my goodness. Oh, hood shocks are blown. It's a little rough. I hear the air compressor. Yeah, air compressor is working. It's got a new alternator. Sounds good. I can't continue to hold that hood up all day though. Yeah, I don't think this back end's coming up off the ground, guys. I don't. Let's take a closer look at it. It is, it's raising, I can see it. It's very, very slow. There it goes, it's raising some more. Okay, it is. I don't know if you guys can see it. It is very slow. It is exceptionally slow. But she's coming up off the ground. Let's see how this side's looking. Yeah, this side's moving up too. I'll turn the camera off, we'll give it a couple minutes. And uh, if the AC works, and if we can get this back end up off the ground, nobody's gonna want this car, I'll bid on it. I'll tell you what, that AC is on, it, it is nothing but hot air inside. So that's, that's bizarre. There's nothing but super hot air blowing out of these vents. 
maybe the blend door is stuck on hot or something. We'll turn that off. All right, we'll give it a few minutes and we'll be back. Well, I've sat here watching it for a while and here's what I see. It comes up, it, it'll start rising, and then it falls again. So the compressor is working, but it's definitely got a pretty significant leak. And like I said, AC doesn't work, power steering is not working very well, so I think we're, uh, I think we're cool on that one. We'll just keep on. I have noticed that my other repo aisle over there is looking a little sparse, guys, but I do see some Ford trucks. <laughs> I know, I know, uh, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. We're gonna go over to the repo side of things and uh, we'll take a look over here because most of this stuff is not anything I'm interested in. But uh, I do see, I see a few Ford trucks. One looks like it's at least a Lariat. It's definitely gonna be a Lariat, maybe even a Platinum. Um, and I wanna check that out. We're gonna come up to this uh, Super Duty. We're gonna see what this thing's all about. This is the one I need to buy right here. A 2022 F350 XL. Base, base model with 9,000 miles on the odometer. How did somebody get this repossessed that quick? 9,000 miles and it's already sitting here. This is a nice truck, even though it's a base model. Bed liner, backflip bed cover. You got that long bed, which is really nice. Well, it's not nice for parking, but it's nice to have all that room. Look at this interior. Wow. It smells good. It looks good. Now this is, explain this. They put the WeatherTech floor mats in, under, and underneath it is a rubber floor. It's, it's, it's the XL work truck. It's a rubber floor. It's the work truck floor. And they put the, uh, <laughs> I don't know. They put the WeatherTech mats on top of weather resistant flooring. Ugh, I don't know guys. Let's turn that radio off. It's got remote start. That's an impressive option for an XL. Like I said, this super base model, obviously four wheel drive. And look at this, this is what I've been complaining about forever. Trailer brakes. It's got the built in trailer brake. I, I just, I feel like all trucks should come with trailer brakes. They just should, because eventually, I think most people are gonna pull something with their truck. I can't believe the mileage on this. 9,140 miles. Wow. Give her a little rev. No, I don't need it. I don't need it. I can't believe how this is a base model truck, but it's got it's got all the sensors. It's got remote start. Like it's got some really nice options for a basic truck. I like it, guys. But no, this is not the truck that I bought. But maybe this is the one that I bought, right? No, not this one either. This is a 2016 F-150 Lariat with the FX4 off-road package. Fox suspension, lift kit, custom wheels. It's got BF Goodwrench, all-terrain, TAs, K02s. And the wheels are black Rhino, hard alloys. And what, what size are these tires? They are 35 by 12 and a half, 50 R20. So 35s on 20s. Bed liner, looks like a skid plate is sitting back there. It's still got pretty decent meat on the tires. I like the interior. It's got this uh, nice plastic over the carpets to keep everything protected. The seats actually look really nice back here. The front seats, not so much. It does have the panoramic roof. It's a nice, this is a nice truck. This is a lot of truck right here. Now I've already looked up the value on it because I am, I am interested in it. I don't, I, I don't know for sure yet, um, but it's definitely a contender. Let's close this hood. It's got, it's got a lot of dings and scrapes and scratches, but with that said, it's a work truck, right? It's a work truck, so we can deal with that kind of stuff. Um, oh, does the key fob not work? Neither key fob works. 
Lovely. Okay, the keys don't work. Lots of scratches. I mean, you could tell this truck is, it's been a toy for somebody. Somebody played with it. it has no running boards, so you gotta kinda jump into it. Let's fire it up. Oh, it's dead. Are you serious? Really? Yeah, it's dead. Oh, man. I was really excited about this truck. I really was. Is that a dirty sock? I don't want to know what somebody used that for. Um, okay, so a couple things. Four-wheel drive with axle lock. It's got the trailer uh, backup package. However, I don't see the trailer brake. Unless somehow it's integrated into this, and I don't think it is. I, I don't think this has anything to do with trailer brakes, but I could be wrong. It's got that nice screen, all digital in the middle there. It's a pretty good size screen. You got a decent size screen there, and, oh, you know what? This does have running boards. Somebody unplugged them. They're probably like AMP Research running boards. Yeah, they're right there. They're hidden running boards. I was gonna say, man, this thing really needs some running boards. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to test drive this. That that sucks. That makes me willing to spend less money on it. There you go. You got the Coyote 2016 Coyote engine. Unfortunately, that means this still has the six-speed transmission and not the newer 10-speed, which really helps this engine out a lot. Um, that 10-speed is kind of a godsend. It really is. It's a great transmission that was co-produced by General Motors and Ford and uh, it's a wonderful transmission. The six-speed is fine, it's great, it's a solid, reliable transmission, but uh, at the end of the day, four extra gears, it goes a long way for added fuel economy. Um, speaking of fuel economy, some of these come with 34 gallon tanks, and unfortunately, I'll have to run the VIN number to hopefully get that kind of information. Not all of them will tell you, but it would be nice if this had the 36 gallon tank for when you're towing long distances. The body is a little rough. I mean, it really does have scratches, dings, dents pretty much everywhere. This tail light's busted. Thankfully, there's no like LIDAR or uh, infrared sensors in there, I don't think. But that tail light needs replaced. If you sent this down to Brian at the Auto Spa, he could probably make a lot of these scratches look better. But these, I believe, are under the paint. I don't know. He could make this truck look a whole lot better. It's $20,000 is the average wholesale condition report on this is what it says, $20,000 for the truck. I think with the lift kit, the big wheels and tires, the look, the red on black, I mean, it, the red and black interior, it's, it's a good looking truck. I might be willing to do somewhere around 20, but I don't think I'm gonna be willing to pay 20. Back bumper is damaged, it's been hit as well. I don't think I'll be willing to do 20 on this. Um, I'd probably do 16 or 17 and that probably just won't be enough to get it. But either way, I like the truck. I wanted to show it to you and I want to make sure I get this in the video because I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be looking for this truck to put on my watch list because the auction is tomorrow. Now I told you we had some Fords to look at. You guys know I'm on a Ford kick, but hold on, wait a minute. What is this? It's a Super B, a 2015 Challenger with 70,000 miles, Chrysler Capital Repossession. 6.4 liter, and it's a little rough. The body's not perfect, but if you're looking for a toy, maybe this could do it. Now, of course, you could pop the hood on this and find out it's just a 5.7, and someone stuck some badges on it. They do that all the time. I don't know, though. Oh, wow, boy, they it's an RT. It's an RT. Somebody went crazy with the fake red carbon fiber. Good Lord. Well, let's pop the hood. I really, I don't understand the, the fake badges. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't get it. Why, why put fake badges on your car? Actually, <laughs> hold on. Let's just look here. It is the 6.4. Well, I take it back, okay? Forgive me. I was wrong. I was wrong. I, it said RT on the seats. I guess it is an RT. Ooh, I didn't see this quarter panel damage. Ouch. That is wavier than the Pacific Ocean. Good Lord. Again, for a toy? Yeah, sure. It's got ventilated seats and... Did that blow 
your eardrums? If you're wearing headphones, it might have. It's got cold air conditioning. Let's see, does it, does it have any gas? It's out of gas. It's out of gas. Traction control lights on, TPMS lights on, check engine lights on, collision avoid avoidance light is on, low fuel light is on, and it's only got 70,000 miles on the odometer. Yeah, somebody did this car wrong. Somebody did this car wrong. Uh, does the screen not work either? Uh-oh. Um, there's got to be a button for the stupid screen, right? Yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That does. Yeah, it looks like the, the screen doesn't, doesn't function. No, man. Nope. Not interested. Not interested. It's already pretty rough. When you start seeing a bunch of warning lights on the dash, just, yeah, I don't know about that. I can't help it. We're, look, we're going to be looking at some because I'm probably going to buy more. I, I know you probably thought from the thumbnail that I bought that big F-350. No, I no, no, I did not. But I did buy a 2018 F-150 with the 10-speed and the Coyote engine. All right, I did buy that, and I'm looking at more. I've, got, I've got already got a 2012 EcoBoost at the house, an XLT. This is a Lariat, and this one's going to have some nicer options. It's a four-wheel drive. It's got the leather interior. Very nice. Looks like it's got heated and cooled seats. It's got some miles on it, which doesn't bother me. I don't mind the miles. It's got no sunroof. I don't know. Is a sunroof really a big deal? No, not to me. It's got a few dents and dings. 178,000 miles. Overall, not too bad. Mainly this door and this door has got some, some damage down in the bottom there. I don't care all that much about that because for me, I'm not trying to make a statement. You know, I don't I don't care. I mean, obviously the nicer it is, the, the more I kind of want it. But at the same time, I'm also looking for a deal. And sometimes if you want to get a deal on something, well, you're gonna you're gonna have to make some sacrifices here and there. This has no gas, absolutely none at all. That's nice. Like I said, four-wheel drive, but again, no trailer brake, no trailer brake. You do have air-conditioned seats though, so maybe that makes up the difference. Pretty decent screen. Let's see if the four-wheel drive works. Yep, it's in four auto, four high. I love the screen. It's got a really nice screen. You should see the 20, I don't know what year they came out with, but it's got the all digital screen, kind of like the Mustang GT. It's bad. It's real bad. I think my dream truck would be a 21 F-150 um, Platinum. Right now, today, it would be it would be a 21 F-150 Platinum. This is a this is a pretty nice place to be. Air conditioned seats work. They feel nice. Power seats move like they should. Oh yeah, yeah, seats work great. Important window, less important window, tinted windows on top of that. This is nice. This is nice. The only question I have is what is under the hood. I'm assuming it's a 3.5 EcoBoost. I couldn't imagine a Lariat coming with a 2.7. Yeah, this is kind of a, a nice middle ground. This is, uh, what is that, heated mirrors? I don't know what that is. It doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, that folds. There we go. There's your folding mirrors, but that right there, collision avoidance maybe? No. I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, that's the uh, the traffic thing that tells you when you've got a uh, blind spot monitoring. There you go, blind spot. I forgot what it was. Let's take a look under the hood. We can't drive it, unfortunately. It has no gas. It's probably about to shut off and die right here. bug is but that shore is not a good place to be uh it is not tires are decent it was a work truck it's got a lot oh the back window is falling out uh-oh oh the whole uh the whole track came off wow <laughs> okay well that's uh that's something to be aware of 
really wanted to drive this, man. But uh, with no gas, I can't. We got no warning lights on the dash other than low fuel. Let's check the fuel economy real quick. Um, engine hours, 5,292, and the idle hours are 1,190, which is not bad at all. Let's go up to trip, and let's see. 7,957 miles at average, 18.4 miles a gallon. That is, that's really good. That's really good. Like I said, it's probably gonna shut off like any minute now. 18.7 miles a gallon on trip two as well. Air conditioning, it was a lot colder and now it seems to be kind of dying out. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. There could be something wrong with the air conditioning or more likely it's running out of gas. It's probably running out of gas. It is pushed to start though, which is pretty nice for a 2015. I don't know, guys. I'm going to pull up the book value on this real quick, get an idea of what I'm looking at. This could be something I might be interested in. So this could possibly be the perfect truck to bring to the channel because I would like to do a comparison between all of the primary engines that you're going to find. Now, I've got a 5.0 on the way. I've got the 3.5 already, but I don't have a 2.7. And this books for $13,400. That's, that's not bad. You're getting a lot of truck for $13,000, guys. So this one, I'm definitely putting on the list as a, as a contender. This is a real possibility. I'm going to bid on it. I don't know if I'll be able to win it. 13.4 assumes it's in average condition, which this one I would say is less than average. You've got the back window that kind of fell in. You've got damage to the bottoms of the doors over here. It's got scrapes and dings and it's definitely, I think it's below average condition. You know what I mean? Big dent in the fender here too. So, you know, if I could get it for maybe 12, 12.5, 12 I think I'd jump on it. And then we can do a comparison video eventually of all three trucks pulling the same car. You know, we'll get a little fuel economy going on each one, figuring out if the Coyote versus the 2.7 versus the 3.5, which one gets better fuel economy pulling and how do they all do driving in regular city traffic. It could be a fun video, It'd take me an entire day to make it, but I think it would be a lot of fun and it could be very useful to people that are in the market for a used F-150 and they just don't know which one to get. Comment below if you think that would be fun because I kind of want to do this video. Well, let's continue on. We'll also go into the garage. That's where they keep their higher end vehicles. Um, we'll go in there after we're done out here and maybe we'll find something interesting. No, I'm not looking at another Ram. <sighs> Another F-150. I gotta stop, man. This one is too nice. This is an STX. I don't even know what that is. What is an X? An STX? I like the color, though. It's a repo. Ooh, ooh, gross. What is on that seat? Oh, wow. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. We'll pass on this one. 100,000 miles. Um, interior, I don't know. I don't know what happened to that. An STX, something tells me it's more of like a sport truck. And uh, I think sport trucks are kind of cool, but at the end of the day, I do actually tow with my vehicles, so I don't think a sport truck is the way to go. <gasps> An Impala. An Impala. What year? 19 with 96,000 miles on the odometer. Please tell me it's a V6. I already see the, the leather. It's an LT. Probably like a 2 or 3 LT. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Good tires. Body looks good. Black on black. This is exactly what I want. I really, I really don't need another Impala right now. I don't. Let's take a look at the interior. Oh yeah, yep, yep. It's got the kind of the combo leather and cloth or pleather and cloth. Mine is exactly the same. Does it smell like mine did? Cause mine was pretty bad. Push to start, very nice. Fired right up. It's got the same screen. I mean, this is identical to mine, honestly, other than 
This one probably has remote start. Let's take a look. It does. This one has remote start, which I'm missing on mine. This one has push to start, which I'm missing on mine. Otherwise, this is my car. It says it's got a flat tire. It's also out of gas, so I can't drive it. <laughs> Lovely. Um, does it have ventilated seats? No, it does not have ventilated seats. The newer ones do, though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't really need another Impala. Honest to God, I like my blue one just fine. Um, my blue one's a little rough. You know, it's definitely been well used. For but for a fun little commuter car. I enjoy it. I do. I, I love that Impala. I daily drove it until I took it to the auto spa for a deep cleaning. And I can't wait to get it back. I'm super excited to have the Impala back. Yeah, I don't think we're going to mess with this one, guys. I've already got one. And the only thing I'm missing is the remote start and push button start. I don't think that justifies buying a whole other car. So we'll continue on. Another F-150, a Lariat. Please, it's a 2016. I keep looking. I'm trying to find 18 and newer. So this one's only got 88,000 miles on the odometer. Let's put this down so I can see under the hood. Oh, it's very wet. Somebody just came out here and washed all of this, I guess. Come on. That looks like the 2.7 to me. Uh, it is. It's the 2.7. I'm really surprised that in this upper trim level, they're putting the 2.7. When you look up on Black Book values, the 2.7 actually takes away value from the truck. Um, the 5.0 and the 3.5 add value to the truck. But you have to go on there and select if it's a 2.7, because if it is, it takes away $500 in value from the vehicle. This is nice. It's low mile, seats in good condition. This is this is nice. Let's go ahead and close the hood. Like I said, I'm I'm down for a 2.7, but this one's going to be far more than the $13,000. The one we were looking at earlier was going for. Let's turn that off. Air conditioned seats. Auto air conditioning. This has got navigation. It's got the trailer control. Interesting. So 4x4, you don't get any manual options. It's all automatic. That's it. On and off. What is... Is that... This isn't four-wheel drive. This is not four-wheel drive. This is just the rear diff lock. That's all it is. So there's no 4x4 on this. It doesn't look like there's trailer brakes on this. This just says trailer backup on. And then I have no idea how to work this. I don't even know what this does. Pro trailer backup assist. I don't know, guys. I, I, I've been going my whole life without any trailer backup assistant. And I've always done just fine. You know, I don't, I don't need any of that extra crap. I, I suppose it's nice to have. But when you've been backing up trailers your your whole life, the, you just know how to do it. You know you don't you don't need a backup camera, and you don't need all these extra tools. In fact, I kind of think that if you start utilizing these tools, I think you you'll start losing that ability to back trailers up. You know, kind of like a boss. And I sure would hate to lose that. Anyway, let's see what this one has. This one's got a quarter of a tank of gas. It runs good. Important window works, less important window works. The back window is not falling out, so that's that's nice. That's nice. But like I said, this truck's gonna go for more. And I think I like the other truck better. I do. And it's gonna go for far less than this one. This is a nice truck though. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a really nice truck, especially for being a uh, 2016 the push to start i like it but they put it in a really weird spot you know like normally you'd expect it to be somewhere right out in the open and it's not it's it's hidden back here behind the steering wheel so it's got the easy exit which is nice running boards overall really nice truck really nice truck and it looks like it's got a bed cover too uh 
Does it work? I don't know. Hold on. Let me just try that out real quick. Let's see. What is... Is it jammed? Uh-oh. I think somebody got it. I don't know. I don't know how that works. So, anyway, nice truck. 2.7. Apparently a decent engine. Good tires. Body looks good. Interior is nice. like that white color. That's a good color, guys. What do you think? I'm going to pull this up on Blackbook real quick. Let's just see what the difference is. Because the other one was right around 13.7. I'm curious to see what this one would be. So, yeah, the value on this one's 21,000, which that's, that's not something I'm going to be willing to do. It's a 2016 it's got a lot less miles and it's honestly in a lot better condition but uh you're it's pretty much the same truck as the one we just looked at 13.7 versus 21. i'll take the one for 13.7 that's just me i'm <laughs> i'm a sucker for a deal i am all right we're almost done and then we're gonna go in the shop and see if they got anything cool in there this is another stx a 2016 with 118,000 miles um, EcoBoost, who knows, 2735, could be either one. Assuming this is just a, no, it's 4x4. Four four. It's got 4x4, four four. it's got your trailer backup, but again, no trailer brake. I'm just wondering if they have somehow integrated the trailer brake into that system, and I'm just not aware of it. I'm so used to the 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 push trailer brake things, I, I could be totally missing it. I find it so hard to believe that you got all of these trucks and they all are missing trailer brakes. They're set up for towing, but they have no trailer brakes. So I'm, it's got to be me. I'm just missing it. So it's an XLT EcoBoost. Let's put this windshield wiper down. It's got 118,000 on the odometer. We'll see what the book value is on this one too. Probably still more than I want to pay. Yep, it's a 2.7. There it is. You can just look at it, see the difference. Definitely a 2.7. This one I like, I do, because it's got less options. <laughs> it's it's a little less nice. You don't even have push to start. You got a key, you know, old school key. You don't have cooled seats, but you do have heated seats. So that's, a, oh, it's, the gauges are freaking out. Never mind, they just came back to life. The gauges were like shaking all over the place. 18.1 average miles a gallon. They probably never towed with this thing. You know what I mean? They probably never towed with this truck. They just drove it to work and back, which is fine, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Windows need to be tinted, that's for sure. Not bad, not bad. Repos can be a source of great deals, guys. It really can. It's out of gas completely. But it goes into gear, four-wheel drive, shift in progress. There you go, four by four works. Shift on the fly, no big deal. I actually had someone get onto me the other day on my F-150 video where we took it for a ride and I was doing 60 or 70 and I threw it into four-wheel high. I had somebody get in the comment section, they just reamed me. I can't believe you would risk damaging your truck throwing it into four-wheel drive going 60 or 70 miles an hour. And I was like, look, you might be a little bit older person that might not realize this. So I was nice. I didn't get rude to him or anything, but it's like, this is four on the fly. Not four low on the fly, but four high on the fly, man. You can, you can do 70, 80 mile an hour all day long and kick her into four wheel drive. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. It ain't gonna hurt anything at all. Well, it's a nice truck. It's got navigation. Like I said, heated seats and all of this stuff. I just wish I knew what all this was about. Maybe this is the trailer brake. It, it wouldn't surprise me. Trailer backup, you can turn it on. And I'll bet that you set your trailer brakes gain by twisting this knob. I'm an idiot. You guys, somebody owns a Ford and you know. Comment below and tell me. I, I guarantee you I'm an idiot. I just didn't realize. I'm like, God, where's the trailer brake? Probably right here integrated to the trailer backup button. I'll bet you money. Well, it's a nice truck. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pull up black value. I still think this one's gonna be more than I want to spend. I think I think I'm really sold on the uh, on the one with like 178,000 miles. But let me pull this up. Let me see what we could expect to pay for one of these. 
So this one looks like it's around 17.4. Now those are just the average market value. That doesn't mean that's what it's gonna go for. It could go for more. It could also go for less. So the, the question really is the Lariat that we looked at, obviously much higher trim level, but a lot higher mileage and it's in less desirable cosmetic condition. This, this one is really nice for 17.4 versus like 13.7, you know? You're talking about a $4,000 difference if this was like a long-term thing that I was going to keep, first of all, it probably wouldn't be a 2.7. But if it was, and this was like a long-term deal, I think I'd probably rather pay the extra $4,000 for this one because this one looks like it was just much, much better cared for. It's got lower mileage. It's a nicer color. It's lacking some of the options from the Lariat. But overall, I think this is just a better truck. But I'm still going to bid on the other one because, well, I'm cheap. Well, guys, I went into the shop and... uh I don't really see anything else in there. That Camaro is still sitting there, but there's nothing really interesting in the shop today. And I'm just kind of taking one last look around the yard, make sure we didn't miss anything. I think we've gone through everything that they have coming up in the auction tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Nothing new has come out. So I guess we're going to end this video like that. So do me a favor. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button. And don't forget to drop your comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.